what happened to does it matter if you're black or white or Indian? Please. Right, which is, by the way, I just want to say quickly. Well, the song didn't say that, by the yeah, way. Sorry. It didn't say Indian. <laughs> that was the problem. And we are back with our favorite segment of the episode, but it's not this week. No, not for a second. Sorry. Speaking of gruesome, uh, <laughs> it continues. Yeah. I am so unexcited about my Keep It this week. <laughs> uh, the ugliest yet. We used to have a board of stars behind us on Keep It, like a, a collage, and I believe she was one of them. So this is tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why don't we just start with mine okay. this week? Mine is Janet Jackson. One of the greatest celebrities we'll ever have. Yes. Truly. Uh, she was asking an interview with The Guardian recently, which, first of all, why is Janet doing interviews? I. This is the beginning of the issue. Because <laughs> she was the queen of not giving an interview for a while, and I didn't know that there was a reason why, and now we know there's a reason why. Yeah. Uh, so she was asked about America uh, potentially <laughs> voting in its first black female president. Mm-hmm. Well, sure. 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 But this is a question that Essence should be asking her, by the way. The Guardian? Um, what are we doing here? Yeah, tough. Well, you know what? They supposedly said she's not black. That's what I heard. That she's Indian. Her father's white. That's what I was told. I mean, I haven't watched the news in a few days. <coughs> I was told they discovered her father was white. I don't know. Honestly. I don't want to answer that because I really truthfully don't know. I think either way it goes, it's going to be mayhem. First of all, if you didn't know this, Janet Jackson is a cross between Marilyn Monroe and Venus Extravaganza from Paris. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> first of all, my absolute favorite part of the quote, which is, by the way, an atrocious quote. It's is going to be said, mayhem? I, is I, you know, I haven't seen the news in a couple days, as if maybe it changed since then, ever, since I got my intel. It is so nonsense. I mean, like, I'm sure a lot of us had the same reaction where it's illuminating in that way where you're like, some people are getting their knowledge, the knowledge, if you will, Janet, Janet fans, from things you would never even anticipate. Like Janet Jackson, somebody who seems like a cool we're used to rooting for janet jackson like the justin timberlake saga we initially we we, we instinctively connect with janet jackson and mm -hmm. yet i look at this and i'm like this is somebody i have never met before yeah so obviously we've heard this crazy shit before from donald trump harris's father donald harris is jamaican he's a stanford professor and he split from her indian mother when she was five uh there's been a lot of back and forth about her Racial makeup, obviously, because she's mixed, and it's really just sort of a sequel to the Obama birther bullshit. Right. It, I mean, it's like borderline the same verbiage, actually. Yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Amid the backlash, BuzzFeed spoke to Mo El Masri, a man who claimed to be her manager and is credited as a producer on her upcoming documentary. Maybe that's why she's giving interviews. This is a documentary. Okay. Yeah, giving it a shot. Yeah. He has given statements about Janet in the past, by the way. Okay. So in a statement to BuzzFeed, he said, Janet Jackson would like to clarify her recent comments. She recognizes her statements regarding Vice President Kamala Harris's racial identity were based on misinformation. Janet respects Harris's dual heritage as both black and Indian and apologizes for any confusion caused. She values the diversity Harris represents and understands the importance of celebrating that in today's society. Janet remains committed to promoting unity and understanding. Okay, the Rhythm Nation's in, back intact. They're intact, right? yes, right. We're all, we're all back in, in our uh, black hats and our uh, militaristic garb. But then, Janet's reps subsequently told Variety that the apology was made by a person who was not the singer's manager, as he had claimed, and thus was not authorized to speak on her behalf. So they just decided, can you just let us make this as worse as possible? Thank you. <laughs> this is our whole thing right now. Mo then told Variety via email, I no longer work for her. I was fired by Janet and Randy Jackson, her brother, after attempts to improve her image in front of public opinion and her fans, and this is something I do not deserve. <laughs> One of the messiest moments in recent pop culture history. 
<laughs> wow. And also, uh, uh, Randy Jackson, the one we just named, is apparently deeply QAnon affiliated. You know what? Maybe there are members of the Jackson family who can be wrong from time to time. I don't know. I've, th- there's no precedent for it in human history. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, you mean um, LaToya when she said from TV that time. <laughs> <laughs> she absolutely can say that. Excuse me. <laughs> wow. This so is... Tough. By the way, I was all excited to see Janet Jackson because she's doing like uh, a Vegas residency. Um, which we sort of were clued into because she went and saw Kylie's. And so we were like anticipating it even then. And then she signed up to do it. Like, I think she'll be doing New Year's shows. And now, in good conscience, can I go see that show? I mean, I was so looking forward to it. I mean, yes. But. (laughs) (laughs) If she does throb, I've got to be there. I've got to be there. At the end of the day, yes. But what I will say is wild about this statement is not that Janet said it. I mean, it shocked me, obviously, that she mm-hmm. said it. But being under the influence of Randy Jackson, uh, obviously, her brain's been twisted. Or maybe she's just felt this way for a while. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe she's also a closet Republican. Who can say what is really going on in the House of Jackson? Okay? <laughs> right. We haven't really known what's ever going on with that family ever, you know? Correct. You're, you're, you're right. All the glimpses we've had is, like, projection and guessing and stuff. We don't know anything personally about a lot of these people. Correct. Rebe, right. I hope you're well. <laughs> Even when we say we know things about, say, like, Beyonce or Rihanna and stuff, like, we know more about them than we do about the Jacksons. Mm-hmm. Because they came up in the era, at least, where they were doling out information to the public through the tabloids or through interviews in the way that they want it to. You know, they came up pre TMZ. Mm-hmm. We don't really know the Jackson family. But what shocked me about the response to this is now, you know, amidst all of the Michael drama, the way that people who are Michael stands defend him online constantly, mm-hmm. you know, like in insane ways. Oh, certainly. The most insane fans who ever lived, yes. Now, I was not prepared for those same people to be coming out for Janet. But of course, right? Right, yeah. So you have people in comments basically arguing in defense of Janet's comments about Kamala Harris because they are so deeply entrenched in defending the Jackson family. Mm Mm-hmm. Which... I mean, these don't strike me as, you know, um, political science m- minded people. So I feel like, you know, like stepping where they up, don't really have the range to step. Uh, also, just like, so your whole angle is you love the Jackson, so you're now going to be racist. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> doesn't really fit. Uh, what happened to doesn't matter if you're black or white or Indian? Please. Right, which is, by the way, I just want to say quickly. Well, the song didn't say that, by the yes. way. It didn't say Indian. That was the problem. <laughs> he wasn't specific enough. Yes, he made it a binary, which we don't believe in. Um, there's an e- Siskel and Ebert ex- episode where they get into the black or white video. Look it up. It's crazy how wrong they are. They watch the mm. video and they, everything I'm, they say, I'm like, did we not watch the same thing? Anyway, moving on. Yeah, uh, uh, it's been a really difficult week. I, want, I root for Janet Jackson and I root for her also to give interviews. So when we get this moment, that's just this unguarded. Also, it's unusually unguarded for her. You're telling me she just said that to a reporter? Like, or it feels like something that, I, I, look, I'm sure she said it the way she said it. And I'm assuming the reporter logged it in good faith. It feels like something you say when you think somebody isn't recording. I just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Yeah. Uh, you, know what, you know what I'm wondering? Michael Jackson fans release doves at the courthouse. Yeah. Oh, no. Are Janet Stans going to be releasing black cats at the White House? <laughs> Smart. One of her best. <laughs> There's just cats meowing around <laughs> the White uh, House grounds, which, <laughs> given the current situation with J.D. Vance and the lies about Haitians, might cause some trouble. Yeah. No kidding. Um, well, also, I mean, I was just hearing recently that Diddy's streaming – um, is up at the moment. Like people maybe remembered him and looked up the songs. And I'm not, I'm not comparing Janet Jackson to Diddy in any way. But if she does release Black Cat it's all over the White House, 
and then people go and listen to that song, it might have been worth it. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> if Black Cat were the next murder on the dance floor that I heard all the time, wouldn't hate it. Come on, that... Weho Pride, let's go. By the way, that is such a more insidious thing than even sort of like R. Kelly, right? The Diddy thing, because Diddy has so many either remixes or features of things where he just wormed his annoying ass onto songs that when you, when we listened to them in the first place, I was like I wasn't listening to all about the Benjamins to hear Diddy. I was right. listening to it mm. to hear Lil Kim's verse. You know, like Diddy is on so many fucking songs that I do not get, like I turn it off when it's his verse in the first place. Like, tell me with Christina Aguilera. Like, I don't want to hear him saying, let's play a game. I'm like, I want to hear her <laughs> Christina Aguilera wailing. <laughs> You're so, right. It's so fucking annoying that he like wormed his way into the trenches of so many people's songs that right. you just he really was- can't cut him out of it. He was sort of immediately supplanted by Snoop Dogg in that way, where it's just like every fifth song on the charts involved him. But before that, it was Diddy. Um, yeah, so good luck avoiding him, even though you you probably think you are. He uh, is basically 1990s and 2000s pop culture personified. So Well, I mean, also, I bet Jesse Nelson, remember her? Uh, sure, yeah. Is, gl- is glad that one single of hers flopped so hard that no one remembers it. <laughs> the one that sampled Bad Boy for Life so hard. Yes, right. Imagine if that was her only song and it was a hit and then she couldn't perform it anymore. Well, the politics beat is not over today because we're going to get to my keep it, <laughs> which is to the otherwise delightful Chapel Roan, who, uh, who whose album I think everybody is now finally on board with. I was like a late comer. Ira and I have talked about this in recent weeks. Super graphic, ultra modern girl, a smash. My kink is karma, a smash. Actually, her interviews, generally speaking, a smash. And then, recently, in an interview with the, you guessed it, Guardian, Chapel Roan was asked What's about- What's going on uh, over there? I, they are cooking up something. Uh, <laughs> Eye of Newt, like, it's all going into the cauldron. Um, she was asked if she would support Kamala Harris. Uh, and she said, I have so many issues with our government in every way. There are so many things that I would want to change, so I don't feel pressured to endorse someone. There's problems on- both sides i encourage people to use your critical thinking skills use your vote vote small vote for what's going on in your city i have friends who say things like she's young why are we expecting this young pop star who became famous yesterday to say all the right things it's not all the right things it's one thing say don't vote for fucking donald trump you can't be touting the trans community you can't be touting drag culture uh, car- uh, communities that are so directly in- uh, affected by this fucking loser Without saying, absolutely don't vote for him. There is a difference. There's, I mean, the, the words both sides. Take in popular culture for two seconds. We simply don't say that anymore. Unless we're referencing the hits of Joni Mitchell. In which case, put on both sides now. It's her best song. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I, uh, maybe she'll retract this or say something in the future. Obviously, I have been on board with everything Chapel Roan has done up until this point. I love screaming that fans are disgusting. As you know. Um, you know, when like once upon a time when people would go up to Madonna and she said, get away from me and like hit him with their fur, fur coat or something. I love that shit. Yeah. I mean, listen, I will say that I'm less angry at her and I'm going to get into this that I am at some very specific thing that seems to be going on on the Internet. And that mm-hmm. is all of these websites like this particularly came from a internet account called pop flop which is every single account now seems to be trying to copy pop crave right which is like a sensation but at the same time just a twitter account so like is it money making why are we copying it anyway so it's pop flop and we and it's it's a verified twitter account so i guess they're trying to make money off of impressions and this quote was initially not even credited to the interview Mm. And what people also don't even realize is this interview, by the way, is not this first interview. This first quote about politics was said immediately after the Donald Trump and Biden debate. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a recent Um, interview. What happens is these I feel like these internet accounts now because every fucking day we are inundated with a new quote from Chapel Run Reveals. Or mm-hmm. like the like she has like talks about she has depression or whatever and I feel like each 
fucking day. It's just easy for one of these things to just like you just pull a new quote from yeah, an old Chapel Rome that, thing. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You put it out and it's the internet is gonna talk about it all day. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to do. You know? And I, I think it's fucking annoying to do to her. I think it's like annoying to do to us. And I think that she could have chosen her words better. I think that when you get into sort of what she said before, the fact that like she wanted she the reason why she didn't perform at the White House is because she wanted to sort of read Palestinian poetry, but her team told her that that wouldn't be right that probably wouldn't be safe for her to do. And she also and, said she didn't want to be a monkey for pride, which I actually respect specifically that verbiage. That yes. is like kind of cool. Yeah. And she has said specifically, you know, that trans rights is very important to her and they cannot have cis people making decisions for trans people, period. As she has said since Kamala became the nominee, that she's lucky to be alive um, where we have a black, where we have sort of a historical black female nominee for president. You know, I think it's not unreasonable for someone who's 26 and who supports Palestine to be very upset with the government that is sending um, arms to Israel. No, by but all means, I think, say it, but, please. But I think Love that, yeah. but I think say that specifically. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that, yes, it's annoying. It's hard because, you know, I think that like specifically saying the words, um, specifically saying the words, there's problems on both sides will make people think that you're saying both sides are the same. I mean, there are problems on both sides, but I think you need to specifically say not because people will be like, you're saying they're both the same because that, that reminds us of Trump saying, you know, there's very fine people on both sides, you know? Right. Right. And I mean, like, and of course there's no reason to compare her to, him etc yeah just being explicit about that point like the genocide thing uh weighs heavily on me and by the yeah. way everybody so yeah. um i'm sorry you not everybody well um, no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i will also say not everybody because i also feel like there is that thing too of even uh there's the thing too of any criticism of kamala at this point because we're trying because we're getting so much closer to the election you're accused of being a republican online now right which which is crazy because she is out here talking about how much Dick Cheney loves her every other day. Right. So who's really being Republican? <laughs> well, also, I just feel like in general there's a sentiment about voting for somebody where because we're in, you know, we're inundated sort of stand culture, if you're voting for someone, that means like you're like fucking obsessed with everything about them. Like, don't be illusioned. Like, voting for someone is what's the best path forward? Like, it's about right. a whole administration. Just whatever. So I feel like there's a lot of sentiment out there just being like, if, if you're saying you're voting for her, you're being rah rah, when yeah. I don't think you have to be. So, which I think that is exactly why she is not endorsing Kamala. And is instead being like, you can vote for her. And I think that a lot of celebrities actually should not be endorsing a, pol- a political can- candidate. If you're a Taylor Swift or a Beyonce and, you ha- and like, you're the biggest fucking celebrity in the world, sure. you know. But a lot of people forget that an endorsement is bigger than voting. Voting means you, know, you are making up your mind at the ballot that this is just sort of the best decision for you. You know, but an endorsement sort of means that you are a like full throated endorse all of their policies, you know, Mm. or or you may have to answer later for you. Yeah, it means means you have to answer later for shit when you do that endorsement. Case in point, politicians all the time, you know, you endorse something. I mean, maybe pop stars don't really have to deal with that, but you endorse any sort of politician and then. Next time you're running for office or you're interviewed or something, it's like, well, you endorse this person. And remember when they voted for the war in Iraq? And I it's like, well, I wasn't say, endorsing that. I, I want to say my last sort of em- empathetic thing about this is maybe she was asked the question sort of um, in a surprise way or offhandedly mm-hmm. or something. And so in that moment, maybe just not prepared to answer it well. Um, mm-hmm. Which is always something you have to think about when you get these random sound bites. Like, what is the actual occasion of the interview? What mm-hmm. is the person asking? Because, like, if it's not a full uh, GQ spread or Rolling Stone article, you know, it's pretty strange. Like, they, like, did they get one question on a red carpet where they were breezing by? You know, you never actually know the physical context of what's happening, too. So I'm not saying that's an excuse for anybody, but oh. something to think about. 
But also bring back, that's why you also want to bring back like MTV News or something, you know? Because I also think that Chapel is a funny and sort of sarcastic and sort of sassy, dry-witted lesbian. Yeah. And you sort of can't read her tone in a lot of these quotes that just get parsed online all the time. Like people always say she complains about everything. Like when that quote came out about her making fun of Haley Bieber's Erwan yeah, smoothie. She was like, this isn't a smoothie, it's a milkshake. But I'm like, if you heard her saying it in the interview, her tone would probably not come across as complaining. It would come across as you joking with your friends, being like, this ain't a smoothie, it's a milkshake. I just want to say, by the way, I had three girlfriends in from my hometown uh, last weekend, and nothing, <laughs> nothing could have deterred them from getting that fucking shake. So I'm ah! sorry. I, people are did still you have obsessed it? no matter what. I did not. No, I actually don't even know what's in it. And I love that. I love a milkshake and all Khalees culture. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lewis, I will tell you exactly what's in Haley Bieber's strawberry glaze skin smoothie. Oh, bone chilling. Okay. I mean, it sounds like something in Mrs. Lovett's meat shop, for one. <laughs> and by Mrs. Uh, Lovett, we don't mean John. Yes. <laughs> That's his mother. Yeah. <laughs> Who I'm sure is lovely. There is. Indulge in the luscious Haley Bieber strawberry glazed skin smoothie made with creamy almond milk, organic strawberries, and avocado. It offers a delightful blend of textures and Flavors enhanced with collagen and sea moss for added benefits. The full ingredients are mock organic almond milk, organic banana, organic strawberries, organic avocado, organic dates, organic maple syrup, vital proteins, vanilla collagen, vanilla stevia, sea moss, Zuma Valley organic coconut cream, Driscoll's organic strawberry glaze. Yeah, baby, that's a milkshake. Babe, it's also every ingredient. I mean, it's, I remember when you would put milk and strawberries together. That was it. Yeah, no, that's definitely a milkshake. It's like seventeen dollars or something. So that yeah, makes sense. maple syrup and vanilla and dates and banana and milk. It's it's. What are we doing here? Maple syrup. That is a bit much. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna actually definitely get it. So I'll report back and tell you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's our episode this week. It was we a little zany, a but yeah, it was everything was so urgent. You know, it, it's like it was like an all hands on deck e news situation. You know, where they bring in yeah. Jules Asner and she's like sitting down at the table, and it looks like the the war room from Doctor Strange Love. Was it sort of thematic for us to bring Love it in and then kick him out immediately within eight minutes? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's great. I just want to uh, before we go tout. Jeff Probst on Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Look up old episodes of that. That was what he did immediately before Survivor. Fabulous mm. host. Fabulous host. Fabulous show. I, Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Was it just music? Yes, it was VH1. And they had celebrity episodes too. But, I mean, for someone like you, you wouldn't miss a question. There was a place okay. for us once upon a time. And there will be again when Pop Culture Jeopardy premieres in December. I watched all the episodes. I wrote on it. You'll love it. Look at you getting that promo in. I know, you know? I know. I and want I that second Emmy nomination. That's why. I know. <laughs> also, look at me. I finally have advanced reader copies. Oh, my God. I don't have one in my hands. Uh, well, is... I'm going to mail one to okay. Crooked. Yes. So I don't anyway, live at Crooked, so send it I'll to me. Mail, I'll mail one to you. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, we have these. So um, go ahead and pre-order one, kids. And, and a Haley about. Bieber shake, yes. Yeah, and a Haley Bieber. They, should, you, you they really a- should come together. They really should come together. <laughs> <laughs> a free Haley Bieber shake along with a book. Can you imagine? Haley Bieber, actually, do promo for us on the show. Come on, keep it. Yeah, what are you doing? Just come on over. Yeah. Anyway, we will see you next week. <laughs>